Hey everybody, all right, carrying forward here, Revelation uh, chapter 10. Uh, <clears throat> and I saw another mighty angel, Jesus, coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud. Uh, that cloud, like I was telling you before, is a swarm of God's people and a rainbow upon his head and his, as his face and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire right there's that fire aspect i was telling you about so when he's casting that fire and the likeness of him being his people he's casting his army uh and he jesus had in his hand a little book open and he jesus set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. All right, so voila. This is telling you about when Jesus and God's army comes down and they land. This is when they're at the river Euphrates waiting. This is just before God takes on the whole world. Um, and <clears throat> what he says here, uh, when he finally reaches the earth, he goes, it was, and he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he, Jesus, had cried, seven thunders, the entire body of Christ, uttered their voices, as God and his people have one voice. And when the seven thunders, Jesus, had uttered their voices, that's the whole body of Christ, uh, Jesus and the body of Christ. But that's really Jesus talking, right? Uh, I was about to write and I heard a voice Jesus the Father from heaven saying seal up those things which the seven thunders Jesus <coughs> the Son uttered write them not so he doesn't that last thing is was uttered before the kickoff goes uh, and God's like don't say that that's reserved everyone's gonna be everyone's gonna hear God <laughs> when he speaks and uh, the angel, uh, Jesus the Son, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hands to heaven and swear by him, Jesus the Father, that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and all things that therein, and earth and the things that, it, that are therein, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So Jesus saying, what's up? So, Jesus knows exactly when he's coming, folks, okay? Uh, and, you know, for, for those that don't understand, you know, Matthew 24, 36, you know, no man knows the day or the hour. You know, it's a three-day event. We don't know within that, and that sort of should just destroy anyone's problem because you have to keep your watch. Don't be sleeping in those three days, those three and a half days. So... That's so, you know, people should address that. And of course, it's at night, right? He's not coming during the day. And he saves us from the hour of temptation, you know, he saves his people from the great hour of temptation that is coming upon the earth. God drops his fucking bomb on everyone, you know, the, the seven uh, vials, his wrath. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Um,. All right, so it kicks it off. The time's no longer. Doot. Um, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, which is Jesus, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God, uh, this is when, you know, sorry, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And what is this mystery is what I was telling you about before. That's when the light of the earth goes down grabs the dead in christ and the light of the world and the flesh become one that's what's supposed to happen okay that's when the mystery is complete and that's why we have oil lamps instead of putting blood on our door it's all about the light that's coming um and you know we're in darkness right I mean, he can't even reveal the light to us because you know what happens when you light a match in a dark room, destroys darkness instantly. So to not destroy us, he's been hiding, okay? Because he's the light and we're in darkness. 
We have to be transformed before he reveals himself. So anyways, um, and uh, the voice of Jesus the Father, uh, which I heard from heaven, spake again unto me and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, Jesus the Son, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And when the angel said unto him, Jesus the Son, give me the little book. Sorry, and I went unto the angel and I said to him, Jesus the Son, give me the little book. And he, Jesus the Son, said unto me, take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And this is just understanding, like, uh, the word of God, you know, the, God's telling you to ingest, take in the word, you know, and there's a component of bittersweet to the truth, and that's what that's all about there. Um, and he, Jesus, uh, said the Son said unto him, said unto me, though thou must prophesy again to many peoples, nations, and tongues, and kings. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel Jesus stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Um, but to the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty-two months. Um, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. We know who the identity of the two witnesses. And they shall prophesy two thousand two hundred and twenty. So people understand what this prophecy is all about. Calling, saying the end is here, is what this is entailing this is what many people are already doing okay that's prophetic in and of itself but it's only announcing the prophetic okay so the prophets you know they shall prophesy you have to contextualize what's really being saying they will speak to the prophecies that are happening and um they're gonna do that for and this is where i got you know choked up because I really only focused on Revelation, which really only addresses the 1260 days when it's far longer than that. So I figured out one piece of the puzzle, stayed too long on it, and did not address what was going down with Daniel and, you know, the 1335 and beyond that. So anyways, that's where we are at now. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, by itself... Uh, it's uh, uh sorry, do, do, do. see a spelling mistake. Um, anyways, carry forward. Sorry, <laughs> gonna cut through this. Um, anyways, so the twelve sixty is a key, but it is not the whole thing. As I was saying here. Um, but rather they are clothed uh, near the end do, 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 do. all right all right so this is the idea it's like when uh, you're reading um, how Jesus framed um, three days on the cross people think that sorry the way Jesus wrote it it looks like um, Jesus is saying that he was after the cross he was in the tomb for three and a half days right or three days and then he rose up to heaven it's sort of written that way and now that we've did some investigation we know otherwise right but that's the lesson you have to take away is he's just telling you stuff sometimes he didn't say and next the next thing that happens and the next thing happens. So if you read this and you go, okay, 1260 days clothed in sackcloth, you might say you're clothed during that time period and you're not. That's not when you're supposed to be clothed. And how do we know this? 
Well, you're not going to be asked to be dressed for 1260 days. That's just not what it <clears throat> what it's all about. Being dressed is about the wedding. Okay? And the wedding feast is 7 days. And this is why in Daniel the covenant is cut halfway through three and a half days it stops he shortens the whole thing for the sake of the elect okay that's what he says he will do to get the exact timing that he does for all of this but that's the covenant that is broken in half in the midst of the week because a wedding typical Jewish wedding is seven days and that's a covenant so the covenant that's being broken is the wedding, the only covenant that's playing out in Revelation, right? And so uh, clothed in sackcloth is not during the 1260. It's just a state that has to happen. But clearly, you have to be clothed in your and your investigation of what sackcloth in is linen, okay? That's what it is. Linen, you know? <laughs> um, anyways, um... And that ties in with Jesus wearing linen, right? And you see the whole picture, right? Once you put those two together and you do a little research on sackcloth being linen, you just be like, oh, grr, damn you, KJV. Um, but God knew this was going to happen. He wanted this to happen. You know, he wanted his people to overcome this stumbling block using their God-giving discernment, which means they're going to have to talk to the Father for that truth. The only way is to be really honest with yourself when you're really dealing with because you have the truth within you. All of us do to discern this, right? If, if you're hearing and receiving this message, you're just as smart as me. The highest level of intelligence that I operate at is common sense. There's nothing higher that I use. There isn't anything higher in intelligence than common sense, okay? Anyone that isn't using common sense makes people who use common sense look like geniuses but the truth is it's more like idiocracy they make themselves look foolish the norm is just being common using your common sense the height of intelligence but anyways suffice to say um these two are the olive trees and the two candlesticks so again you know the two olive trees the two candlesticks now we're starting to see this is another representation of god's people okay the, the one of the candlesticks is jesus the other is his people just like the two witnesses right standing before god the father right come on you really think the candlesticks you know standing there you gotta make the links that's what we're here to do here okay hopefully you're you're getting it anyways carrying on so uh standing before the two candlesticks standing because they got legs because they're people anyways if any man will hurt them what the two candlesticks the two olive trees it's the two witnesses right right you can hurt them right the people Fire proceeds out of the mouth of the two witnesses, folks. Okay? This is the two candlesticks. This is God's people. The two witnesses. Okay? Already on chapter 11. Okay. <clears throat> uh, should have known. Witnesses are always in 11. <laughs> and like I said, this is an aspect of you being... You know, God's people being dragons. You know, if we're lucky enough to be counted worthy, you will be transformed into a new creation and you'll breathe fire. You're going to be dragons. That's why the great red dragon is Jesus. Like, it's, we're going to come up and we're going to unveil that hidden. That's what they try to demonize all of this stuff, man. Try to make 666 about, you know, make it look like a bad thing. But why would 666 thing, if you start doing, you know, when I do the video on who is Jesus, I do a little section on that numerology and how NASA is putting all that 666 in there to show their satanic thing. But these people are trying to say they are God. 
You know, that was the whole problem. Everyone in Old Testament is trying to say they're gods over men. Men are trying to become gods. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was the biggest shit in the world. He thought he was God. And God had to bring him down. You're nothing. You're just a man. And the guy checked himself. That's what we got to understand. Men acting like they are gods. And it's going to be beautiful because we're going to address this a little further, especially when we get into the, you know, the host concept. Uh, anyways, it's going to get more and more interesting uh, the more we pull this unveiling uh through here anyways if any man unbeliever will hurt them god's people during their lifetime he the unbeliever must in this manner be killed by fire <laughs> it's, it's gonna be bad these god's people have the power to shut heaven that it not rain in the days or of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the this the waters right the power to just like destroy people to turn them to blood means <laughs> take a man with your iron rod and beat them to their blood that's what this is and to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will it's five months right it'll be like harsh sun and you're going to put the weather on them, man, when you're God's people. It's pure vengeance. You're not going to enjoy the five months, man. God's wrath is going to be brutal. God said his people are cruel. I believe him. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, when they say God's people shall finish, and when they, God's people, shall have finished their testimony because they're one of the witnesses of god the beast jesus that ascend us out of the bottomless pit shall make war against no 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 no. it's not gonna make war against them okay it's gonna make a war with them that's where the devil tried to separate and make the beast attack god's people by making that word against but when you look at the true translation of that word, it's with. In fact, let's do that. Let's look at, this is one of those important ones. So I think it's worth digging in here. Let's just show you how deceptive this really is. And 11.7. So here we are. And when they shall complete the testimony of them, the beast coming up out of the abyss will make with them war. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Accompanied. See? It's like alongside. Look, like-minded. It's not fighting against them. All right. Uh, do do do. I will overcome them. Um. Accompanied, see it's with. See the way they put they mistranslate even in, in the in that interlinear version. When we go inside to the word and we examine what that word is, oh, that's like alongside. They are not at war with each other. They're war with together. There's like a union. Um, so, anyways, it's not against. It's with them. And shall overcome them, the unbelievers, and kill them, the unbelievers. So Jesus, the beast, and God's people shall overcome the unbelievers and kill them. Okay? Together they do that. Uh, anyways, uh, and their unbelievers' bodies shall lie 
like the frogs and the plagues of Egypt. This is so key. Okay. And their unbeliever dead bodies shall lie like the frogs and the plague of the Egypt in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. To remind us of the plague, if you didn't catch it the first time, where I, you know, that's why I'm inserting the frog concept in here for us to go, oh, right, the frogs just, they were stinky and disgusting. But anyways, where also the Lord was crucified. And that has to know, you have to know a little bit about uh, New York and to know that there's an, you know, cavalry there and there's a Babylon even in New York City. But Neither here nor there. Anyways, um, Exodus uh, chapter 8, 13. Uh, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, out of the fields. And they gathered them together in heaps. And the land stank. Okay. And so the next line. And they, God's people of all the kindreds, tongues, and nations, shall see their dead bodies of the unbelievers after the three and a half days and shall not suffer their unbelievers dead bodies to be put in graves so after the three and a half days the war is on and when they fuck them up they just leave the dead there they don't bury any of the dead this is just like the frog plague okay and this is where that frog concept comes in a little bit later when the spirit of the frog comes out that's God sending the frogs, man. God did that. This is not Satan. And so it's going to be a clue as to like we're going to unearth the, the true identity of the false prophet because it's not the Pope. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the lying spirit. I'm going to show you that. I know that sounds controversial, but we're going to look at that, um, especially in the... Uh, um, especially in the Who is Jesus uh, bit. But anyways, we get down here and we're going to see it as well. Um, boo, boo, boo. Right, and so they shall not suffer after three and a half days. And they, God's people, that dwell upon the earth, because now they're going to dwell upon the earth, shall rejoice over them. All of them they're going to be partying over the dead. It's going to be fucking crazy over the unbelievers. And they're going to get presents and rewards and get gifts to each other. It's going to be joyous. We're going to be, it's going to be a party at the same time for God's people. Because these two prophets, this is Jesus and his people, were tormented by them that dwelt on the earth. That's why. Um... And after three and a half days, a spirit of life of God entered into them, and God's people, and they stood up on their feet, and the great fear fell upon the, them, the unbelievers, which saw God. Now, you're not going to try and put these things linearly, like this happens and this happens, because you're going to have the dead bodies first before, because what's this being described is what happens after the three and a half days. Three and a half days happen, they get resurrected, right? So that's the resurrection moment. Then all the dead bodies happen, the murdering and all that. But you've got to be aware that if God's people are being resurrected, you know that God's people need to be resurrected where the dead bodies have to happen after the fact. So that's how you can sort out where the timing is of these things. Just because you know that this is resurrection right here, <laughs> clearly. So anyways... um. And here's the confirmation. And they, God's people, heard a voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up, hither, resurrection, like I said. And they, God's people, ascend up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies, unbelievers, beheld them. And it's just not two people, obviously, right? This is all of God's people. Um, and, that, and that's how you start putting this picture together about the two witnesses. That's all of God's people getting resurrected there. And at the same hour, uh, was there a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city in the earthquake were slain of men, 7,000. And this has happened. This happens. That great earthquake happens in, uh, 
the three days of darkness is what you should know because the remnant were like whoa okay um this is uh so this is looking for an end time sign there's going to be a massive earthquake but the people that do die are non-believers okay these aren't god's people so uh when you hear of that or feel that earthquake everyone in the world is going to feel that earthquake uh don't even sweat it just rejoice it's what the lord is telling you is one of his signs right at the end to know and that's happening in uh new york just so you know uh the great earthquake in the 10th part of the city fell that's new york my two cents uh but unimportant salvationally right to know where that location is anyways um the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly and the seventh angel jesus sounded and there were great voices jesus in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are are become the kingdoms of the lord that's right and of his christ and he jesus the father shall reign forever and ever and the four and twenty elders which we know as the four beasts and the great multitude his army uh which sat before jesus the father on their thrones fell upon their faces and worshiped jesus the father uh jesus like his time on earth leads by example uh this is what i was telling you the son is going to be praying in front of the father you're going to see that just like he did on earth okay it's playing out exactly the same as in heaven the dualistic but make no mistake the son is the father they're the same but they're leading by example it's beautiful it's amazing anyways uh saying we give you thanks O lord god almighty which art and was was an art to come because thou has taken the thy great power and has reigned so they're talking you know the son and the the body of christ are talking to the father and saying he who was and who is to come like he's jesus right like you should see the the oneness of those two and it's just the capacity that he can operate in is greater than ours okay and he's god right <laughs> I don't know how he performed the miracles and healed the blind just like i don't understand like i won't be able to comprehend how he can be in two places at the same time but that is god all right he's allowed that supernatural capacity already we're ready in omnipotence right he can do anything and he's and he does it to explain the spiritual reality we're about to enter into um okay so they're giving him praise in this line here and the nations were angry and thy jesus wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged unbelievers that's who's going to be judged and that thou jesus should give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great of god's people listen not everyone's getting the same shit okay some people get more some people get less but it's up to fucking god what he does and how he does it out who are we to say who gets what and where right whatever he gives out the reward you know maybe it's everyone gets the same penny who knows right it's for god um uh and should uh, destroy them unbelievers which destroy the earth and the temple of god was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple uh the ark of his testament and there was lightning and voices and thunders and earthquakes and great hail see he's just described his temple which is his people as great hail okay like that's god's people so you should know the hail that's coming down is god's army and we're but to enter revelation chapter 12 and i'm going to take a little break and we'll just upload that little bit there and ah uh, because this is a, a toughie and a biggie and uh 
it's fine. It's all fun. It's all great. But uh, yeah, it's a big chunk. So we'll just take a break and make this a start on a new one. All right. God bless.